everyone, Randy from Extreme Sandbox here. Today we're gonna to show you how to operate an excavator. Yes, we get a lot of clients off the street that we get out here just to kind of play and we teach them how to do it. So we thought it'd be cool to put a how-to video together on how to run one of these things. Now, disclaimer, we are not experts at all, but we can show people and we teach people daily how to do this. So we're gonna show you how to do it. So let's check it out. So first thing, three points contact. Anytime you get in or out of equipment, now we're, today we're in a Komatsu PC210 excavator. Um, the controls I'm gonna go over are gonna be in the Komatsu machine. Most of them are pretty standardized between the different uh, companies that make excavators. Um, but I'm gonna go through kind of the controls on this model, whether you can run a 2,000 pound mini excavator all the way up to a 60 ton excavator. Generally the controls are pretty standardized there. So first thing I do when I get in, put my seatbelt on. Big thing on these, again, I've shown this on other videos, there are always door locks on equipment. Basically, a lot of this equipment can be run with the door open. Uh, typically at the sandbox, for safety reasons and dust control, we seal our cab. So there's a lever right there on this. Basically, we'll lock that door open, but we're gonna swing it shut. Okay, seatbelt is on. One click on these. Make sure my system boots up. No error message, anything like that. I'll turn it on. I always let it idle up for a sec. Let it run, you know, a couple minutes. We were running this thing earlier today. Now we're gonna go over some of the controls. So first thing, I'm gonna slide my seat. There's always a lot of different seat adjustments on these machines, so it's very important to be comfortable where you're at. You can reach the joysticks. You're, these two track paddles are what drive the tracks. So. On the machine, you know, safety is always the number one. There is a safety lock lever over on the left side. That is this red lever over here. Uh, each different company has some version of this, but basically when it's down, nothing's gonna work in an excavator. When we flip that up, that means everything is live on the equipment, okay? So in general, you don't wanna be, you know, wanna be ready to go before you pull that back. You shouldn't have anyone on your tracks, anyone near you should have your seatbelt on be ready to go anytime that lock lever's up. Again, each manufacturer's a little bit different. Uh, there's some other different types, but usually it's always a lever that's gonna block that doorway. That's the big indicator that everything's uh, live on there. So to start with, we're just gonna go over some basic controls. Now, the first thing I wanna tell you, there are two different types of control patterns for excavators. Um, basically, there's ISO controls and SAE controls. Uh, typically, ISO is the standard. Uh, historically, I've heard people call them cat controls and then John Deere controls. Not sure why they get broken out that way, but it's also been called excavator, backhoe controls. There's different types. Really, I'm going to go over the controls with ISO, which is the most standard. I think the most important thing to know is pretty much every excavator out there nowadays, the newer stuff, has a simple valve that you can change patterns, whether or not it's on the Komatsu. It's actually right behind us uh, by the engine compartment. There's a valve you turn. I think Caterpillar has something underneath the floorboard. You just turn a valve and it basically changes it. But again, these are ISO controls we are going with that I'm gonna show you today. So again, you always wanna be close enough. I have feet are touching the ground. I got my throttle over here, climate control right there, but everything is set for me right now. So if I start with controls, it's to show you the basics. The right hand is your boom and bucket, okay? So if I pull back in this right hand, you'll see this raises the boom up. And I'm gonna go ahead and throttle this thing up too. So there's a throttle knob, it will, you'll see it run at, at basically idle, but I'm gonna throttle this thing up. Now this, if you notice, I turned the throttle up, but the engine, you didn't hear it right away. Most of the newer excavators have a uh, auto idle. So when the machine's not working, it'll bring it down to idle. So you'll see as soon as I touch this, it'll go back. Now, right hand forward, we'll bring that boom back down. Now, right hand to the right is going to open your bucket right hand to the left, we'll close it. So that's your right joystick. Left joystick is your stick and swing. So with the left, if I go forward, it's going to put the stick out. And if I pull back, it's going to bring it back. And you'll notice hydraulics, as hard as I pull this, that's how hard it goes. If you let off quickly, it stops quickly. So generally, you want to be smooth with hydraulics. Now our swing control. So it's left and right with this left joystick. If I go left, spins left, 
If I go to the right, it spins right, and I can do literally a 360 here. The machine will not have a hard stop on this. It'll just keep spinning if you let it. Those are those controls. Now, typically, we talk about driving position for us. Now, our driving position, everyone's a little bit different. They also call it transport mode. Ours is boom up, stick with it straight down, bucket flat. Basically, what it looks like right here is how we drive with them. The other piece you notice is your square to your track. So what you don't generally want to do is be sideways to your tracks at all because it's very awkward when you're driving. Now you can, the machine will absolutely operate, but generally it's just a lot less confusing if you are square to your tracks out there. The other sometimes transport mode you might see is when we curl the bucket in and basically tuck it all away. Now the machine is not going to hit anything here. They're designed, they have their stops in place. So you can see I can tuck this thing in really tight. So generally if an excavator is going in a tight area, you can see how I have everything kind of compact and curled in there. So that this is the other transport mode you might see. In the wide open though, especially at our site, we generally just have these things straight up and down, bucket flat. The finally on the controls here is these two track paddles. And I'm gonna go over that with driving in a second. Each one of these controls one of the tracks. So the right one, right there and left one right there those are the two track battles so those are all the basic controls on the machine now let's go into driving so the next is driving now there are a few different ways to drive an excavator uh, for our clients out here, we usually teach with hands, but I'm going to show you probably the most popular way that uh, people do it in the industry is with their feet. So in general, you're either driving or you're digging. Rarely you're, you should be doing both. So it's either operating these joysticks or those. Uh, an expert might obviously be doing multiple things at the same time, but again, if you're just starting out, always keep it simple. Do one at a time. My feet are on here, so now, and I can keep my hands on my joysticks, I normally would. For this video, I'm gonna keep them off just to show you I'm not touching that at all. Right here, again, each one of those, they go both directions. So I am gonna push on both of them. And you see, as hard as I push them, that is how fast the machine will go. And if I wanna turn, so if I wanna start turning the left, I just let off on this left one. You'll see my right one keeps going, turning me. Opposite way, if I let off on my right, it turns me that way. Now there are, on pretty much every excavator, there's some level of a, a speed uh, limiter or controller on it. So for the Komatsu, there's a little button on here and you might not be able to see it on here. I'm on low speed, where they got a medium and a high. Uh, it doesn't really, I mean, you're going from probably three miles an hour up to maybe eight. Uh, excavators are not designed to go really fast. They're designed just to move to the job wherever they need to dig and then move. So I'm gonna put it back to low. But each manufacturer usually has some level of piece they can change. So I'm gonna drive up here, and again, if I want to go backwards, see how I push on my heels. They go both directions. So you'll see these things are connected, so you could do it just as easily with your hands. Now again, just to go while we're talking about driving, perfectly acceptable, I can drive. So if you see right there, it doesn't change anything right here. You know, I can still drive sideways. It's just really awkward, because I can't see my track, so I don't really know what I'm doing. So generally, you want to have everything nice and square. And a lot of times I just tell people to look out over their feet. And you can kind of see where your feet, where the glass there lines up with the tracks. Now, while we're talking about driving, forward, reverse, doesn't really matter. If I go the other direction, I just need to know I'm in reverse. So then I'm actually pulling on these things instead of pushing them. Okay, let's spin back around. So ideally, I'm gonna drive forward best way to get position for digging is really to be straight over your tracks. This is where the machine is the most stable. You've got that base spread out, the track width spread out. So in general, you should be lined up square to your tracks to dig. Again, I'll show you in a little bit. You can dig off the side. Uh, the machine's just not quite as stable. So we're going to start off square to our tracks, okay? So now we're going to go over digging. Okay, so now to go over digging. A lot of times for a newbie, I recommend taking the feet off those controls. Just otherwise, you might not even know it. You might end up hitting that while you're going. The other indicator is if you hear that beeper, 
that means you're hitting a track pedal. So you might even, right here, I'm barely touching it. The machines, it's not powerful enough to move it, but I can hear the beeper. That means that my foot's on there. I like to pull them off. Um, and I think for a new operator, it's best to do that. So now, hands-on joysticks. We always start extending the stick out. You know, generally the further away from the machine, the less trouble you're gonna get in. So it's always good for a new operator to start further away. So I put the stick out, bring it down. And then I usually stop foot or so. This is where we want to look at our teeth or on the bucket. Now we have dirt buckets here. There are a lot of different types of buckets or attachments on here. Some you won't have teeth. You'll just have a smooth edge. That's usually for digging a foundation where it's not going to break up the ground, but it, really the concepts are all the same. So if I always err on the side of out a little bit, you don't want to go in, you don't want to open your bucket all the way right away. Cause right now you'll see, I would actually hit that joint that's connecting the bucket. Not necessarily going to hurt the machine, probably not great for those joints and everything in there because you're going to pull a bunch of material right in there. So in general, that's too far open. The opposite of that, if I go in too far curled, I'm not going to get much of a scoop because the bucket's not as curled partly. So again, there's a happy medium between having them out just a little bit. Then I push it down right there. All you got to do then is curl right hand left. Now, you'll see it kind of got stuck. This is where you start pulling back on your boom at the same time. And that'll raise it while curling it. So right now it's curled, you see it's stopped all the way. Raise it up, a few feet above the ground. Then with my left hand is my swing control. Obviously you don't want to dump too far from the pile. In general, you're going to be backfilling that later. So it's got to be somewhat close. And then open that bucket up. Now the key, again, when you open it, ideally just open it until the material falls off. A lot of new operators, as they're open, they keep going. And you'll hear that. That's the hard stop. The machine's designing, it's designed to stop on its own. Again, not great for the machine. So in general, just open it enough to where the material goes out on its own and it's done. That is the first one I had. So if we go in the same spot, generally you want to push down hard enough. Now this machine it will lift up. The boom cylinder will lift up this entire machine. So if I keep pushing right hand forward right now, you're going to see my entire tracks will raise off the ground. In general, you don't want to do that. You want to keep your tracks flat on the ground. So if you start, you want to get to that point where you almost feel the tracks lifting, but not quite, because that means you're putting enough downward pressure to get, you know, all that pressure is going on those front, on the front of the bucket to get a full scoop. Now that I'm there, again, curl it up. It's going to get stuck. Again, do you don't, if I just pull back in the right hand right now, here's what's going to happen. It's going to raise up. My bucket's not curled all the way. So I'm going to lose that material. That's why it's important to curl while I do it. So if I do that again, curl, stuck, and I'm going to pull back slowly. Now, depending on the size machine you're running, when you do that little piece and start pulling back, you might feel the back of your excavator pick up a little bit. Uh, there are large counterweights behind us there, and that's also why I'm digging straight off my tracks. So I'm most stable. Obviously, if you feel your machine still starting to tip, maybe you got to open the bucket, not be quite as aggressive. Obviously, safety is key there. Our machines, again, we run Komatsu PC210s, roughly 26 tons. These machines are very stable on a flat surface. Generally, the larger the excavator, the safer it is, just because you've got a larger base. So, you know, most people think that a smaller mini excavator is safer, and I would actually say the opposite, is because it's a smaller machine, it doesn't have as big a base on it. So sometimes you get more trouble on a smaller machine than a bigger one. Raise that one up, and again, dump it there. Now, when we train again, we try and do one thing at a time to really keep it simple. But the other piece we wanna show is using the stick. A lot of people, when they're digging, whether you're digging a trench uh, or just moving, they want to go straight to the track piles to back up to get dig closer. Understand that a lot of these machines, they have roughly a 20 to 30 foot reach. To be most efficient, you don't want to have to move the tracks every time you're trying to go. So that's where this stick comes in. But as you see, as I pull the stick in, it also brings it down. So this is where you're using both joysticks. I have to raise the boom up, stick in, but then again, I can't go in right there. I want to go with the teeth straight down. I'm going to extend it out just so I can get into that first hole I had. And then I curl that one in. 
same thing, raising it up. Sometimes, again, we teach our clients to curl it all the way, but as you can see, some of that material will actually fall over the back of the bucket. So for an operator, it's kind of a delicate balance here where you're just trying to keep as much material in that bucket. So you see how that bucket's a lot closer. Now, this bucket will, I can curl it all the way up here. I can get this thing right in front of me. You see how close that is. In general, these buckets are not going to hit you in the cab. There are stops built in, uh, but two things. First of all, the material is not secured in there. So as you notice that, it kind of jumped out there. So depending if you had rocks or debris, that stuff can come up on your tracks, anything like that. Uh, if there were some accessories like uh, thumb, there might be other things if there's not the standard bucket, but generally they're not gonna hit it. Now with that said, that's the cab. This thing can absolutely hit my tracks. So you see if I go off the corner here, you can absolutely hit the corner of your track. See, I'm touching it right there. If I were to uncurl, I'd actually clip my corner of my track. So that's also why I said in the beginning, distance is your friend. The further out you are away, the less trouble you're gonna get in because this thing will absolutely hit your tracks if you let it. Now, I'm gonna curl my bucket. So if I just extend it without curling my bucket, you'll see it'll start to, because I'm not making any adjustments, it's gonna start falling. So I'm gonna curl it as well. And ideally, you want to have one dirt pile. You don't, or if you're doing a trench, it might be a row of material. So the who's ever coming into backfill later has that clean area to fill. So I'm going to dump there. So those are basic controls. You know, some of the more uh, expert, I'd say, for an operator that's been doing this for a while, they're doing multiple. So you can see, I can do multiple cylinders. I can be spinning. I can do all these at the same time. Uh, the machine can absolutely do it, and it after you've gotten a lot of stick time, you'll be able to get better at that. So, but I always start people, just do one motion at a time. Figure out what each cylinder does on this thing. You know, if you know the different components, you'll start being able to pull those together. So with this one, you know, an expert is generally pulling the boom in, the stick in, and curling. They're almost doing three, kind of scraping it up towards you. So that looks kind of like this. So if I'm pulling both my cylinders in and I'm curling my bucket, you'll see how I'm getting a nice full and I'm kind of scraping nice and smooth like that. Instead of just doing one, now I can do the same thing going out and I can put it right there. So that's where you really want to practice and get proficient in doing multiple motions on here. So I can scrape it, pull it right in. And this typically is how someone trenching would do a trench right out in front of them and again, depending on what grade they're going to, they would always start at max reach, get as close, you know, within a few feet of their tracks. And then that would be the time where they would back up because then they're going to start it all over again. So I would push back. Obviously, I'm looking where I'm going backwards. You've got mirrors on the machine and I could start that all over again. That is the basic dig controls there. So at any point, if I were to park it, we generally just want to I try and put our buckets flat to the ground. We usually touch it. If you leave the bucket up in the air, they can settle. So you want to have that and put the lock lever down. But that's everything with digging. So now let's talk about backfilling. Okay, so now we dug the trench, dug the hole. Now let's just go over backfilling. Uh, you know, for backfilling, obviously a bulldozer is great for backfilling. That's generally what is going to come in and do it. But it's not realistic to have a bulldozer on every job site. You know, you pick, take the tool you've got out there. You know, excavators can be used to fill just as much. So with that, you know, part of it's just the opposite is you are just taking scoops out of the pile. Now, the biggest thing people want to do it right away is they want to use the side of the bucket. Well, a couple of reasons uh, that's not great. Uh, so if I do this, first of all, you're going to realize really quickly there's not a ton of lateral force on an excavator. You know, in general, that lateral swing is just designed to move the tool. It's not designed to actually do moving material. Uh, so that's the first piece. The second, it's not great for the bucket. You know, there are the pins that go in there. If they're they're meant to go this way, straight through towards the machine. If you have that twisting force on them, it's not great for your machine. Usually, you only do that at the very end, and that's where you're going to kind of get a grade. If there's this much material, which again is not much here, I'm still going to try and just scoop through it using my same thing I just did on the first one. I may try and you see how I swing a little bit while I'm in it. So I can drag a little bit over, but in general, I'm using the bucket curl because that's going to use the most. Now here's really important where I'm basically trying to scrape up. I don't want to create a new hole. So I'm trying to move material without 
going below the surface where I dumped. So it's kind of a finesse thing where you have to pull the boom up and stick in at the same time and try and swing over. And then I dump it out. Try one more out here. This is what really takes lots of stick time to get really good and proficient at doing both movements, the stick and the boom at the same time with some bucket curl. You generally wanna start out at the farthest point you can because then I can just back up to get the closer part. So you'll see some of the first spill I can't reach. So I'll actually drive forward just a little bit so I can get out beyond that little ridge line there. Pull that in and start swinging. Now there wasn't, we didn't have a ton of material here. Now to finish this off, this is where we transition now to using that side because we're not actually moving a ton of material. I usually tell people, get the bucket, the teeth flat to the ground. You wanna try and use that. You don't wanna go in like this because you're not gonna, you're just gonna basically create a slope and you don't wanna have it curled all the way because you're gonna see it's just gonna concave through and it's gonna create kind of a circular. So what you wanna do is get your teeth flat to the ground. So a lot of times I'll touch it, make sure it's good. Then you just raise it off and then you can slowly start swinging through. If it goes great, sometimes you just have to pull back on it. I'm gonna go forward a little bit more so I can get that outside edge. Like that. And again, if I overshoot that a little bit, just pull that material in a little bit. And then I can just use that stick to get closer distances here. So you'll see I'm roughly getting in and I wanna be careful how close I get. I'm still at a good distance here. And if it were to stop, I would just pick up the boomer right now. Right now it's able to move all this material and I'm just shaving layers off here. And then I can back up. Now, once you get to the end here, you saw kind of how I was curling up towards me. The other thing you can do is use the back and kind of rake it away from you. So if you have material that's too close, you generally want to have your bucket open like that. You don't want to go into this with your bucket curled all the way. Because you'll see on the back there, it's that same joint there. This is not great for the machine because you're going to get all that sand, material, whatever you're doing, right into the joint where that boom cylinder or uh, bucket cylinder is. So the ideal way, have that bucket open all the way. That way you're just using the bottom of the bucket. And this, so if I push it just straight down, you'll see it's not going to, the stick's not going to go anymore. That's where you have to pull the boom back. And then as it, I can push that boom and kind of push material away from me a little bit. These are the things that are a little bit more advanced that guys that have been doing this for years, there's a reason they're so good is they do this and they get the feel of it. It's because it's tough to keep that bucket nice and level at the same time. You're adjusting multiple different components. And then I can come through and use the side of the bucket and to try and finish it off if there's material left. Not perfect, but for a short amount of time, not bad. So now again, to park it, usually we park it with the bucket flat. There's a lot of different uh, ways you can park the machine. The key though is being square to your tracks. A lot of times I see new operators might park like this, something like that. The big difference here, and you'll see it from the outside, is to get in and out of a machine, generally there's a step on the tracks. If I open the door right now, you'll see I'm off to the side and it's kind of awkward. You know, a lot of times getting in and out of a machine is usually where people have dumb slip and falls. That's where they get injured. So that's why it's really important. Uh, you either want to be square like this or for anything, a hair the opposite direction because that actually opens up that step just a little bit more for me. Uh, but our machines are large enough, if I just go square, it's gonna, when I open the door, I'm gonna have a nice in and out of the machine. Then I just set the bucket flat. Nice and flat, everything is stable in the machine. 
From there, remember you always want to uh, deactivate that safety lock lever. So that's this red lever, again, whatever machine you're in is going to have some parking brake lock lever on the side. I pull this up and now it's down, everything is safe in there. Okay, then I usually turn my throttle down. And we let our machines cool off about a minute or two is what Komatsu recommends. You don't have to leave them idling very long. We let it run for a little bit and then we'll shut it down. Okay, and then three points of contact. Step, step. Again, lever to release the doors right there. Cool. Hopefully you guys had fun watching this uh, episode of how to operate an excavator. Please comment below if you're an operator, have a lot of stick time. Give us any tips and tricks you might have. Again, we are not experts. So uh, thanks a lot for watching. Take care.